Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you today. We thank you for this wonderful day that you have made, Lord. We will rejoice be glad in it in the midst of every trial, every testing, Lord, that you allow your church to go through, that you order for your church, Lord. For your called out, for your elect and very elect, O oh God. O oh, Heavenly Father, I pray today that you would touch your body, Lord. Touch your church today, Lord, with your truth. Touch them with your power. The power that is your humility, Lord, that is your awesome holiness. And who you are, Father. Oh, our God, we just praise you and worship you that you've given to your church all that it needs, Lord, to walk in purity of heart, walk in holiness and beauty before you, Lord, and before the world. And Oh, God, I pray that you will just so instruct us in your word this morning, today, that, that your word, Lord, would be that lamp unto our feet and light unto our path that we would gain understanding by your great and awesome truths O Lord contained therein and that Holy Spirit you would speak us and as it is recorded in John lead us into all truth lead us into all the truth that is Christ our beloved Savior and Holy One hallelujah hallelujah Oh, Father, we just worship you today. We thank you so much for all of your goodness to the children of men, O oh Lord. Lord, you show mercy to the just and the unjust, O oh Lord. Lord, you show your great kindness to the just and the unjust. Lord, your ways are past finding out, Lord. Your ways are past finding out. We we can't even begin to to, to reach into the depths of of your ways, O oh Lord, and 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 understand your workings and but O oh Lord we ask for understanding. You said to seek me and you shall find, knock and you shall and the door shall be opened unto you, Lord. That that's what you said to us, Lord. You said to knock and the door shall be opened unto you, my people. You said seek and you shall find. Lord, we're seeking today, Lord. We're seeking from your hand today what we need in this walk, Lord. What we need today in this pilgrim journey that we are on, O oh God. O oh, Father, we, we praise you and worship you, Lord. We glorify your holy name, O oh Lord, in the midst, in the midst, Lord, of every trial, in the midst of every testing, temptation, Every, everything that you allow, Lord, that you order, that you bring, Lord, to us. We just want to praise you and worship you today, Lord. We just want to worship you in the beauty of holiness and, and thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness unto the children of men, O oh God. O oh Father, O oh Father, we need you today, Lord. We need you today, Lord. Your church needs you. Sharon and I, Lord, we, we need you today, Lord, to move mightily in behalf of us your people Lord all of your church and us here Lord in this ministry Father we, we need you Lord to move mightily today we, we thank you Lord that you hear and answer the prayers of your saints O oh God Father you know the needs of our heart today Lord you know the needs of this walk that we are on O oh God and you are the one Lord who knows best not us, not we ourselves, O oh God, but you, you alone, O oh Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, our God, we just bless you and praise you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you said, all authority has been given unto you. And then you said, therefore, go, hallelujah, go and preach the gospel. Go, teach my people, show my people what they need to see. Show them what I tell you to show them. That's what you said to us, Lord. You said to feed my sheep. The Lord Sharon and I have, we believe, Lord, given all, Lord. 
left it all to follow you, Lord. And, and you have never forsaken us, Lord, never forsaken us. Though the enemy might try to plant that doubt in our mind, Lord, we rebuke it constantly every day. Hallelujah. Because we know that you are a faithful God, Lord. Awesome in holiness and in beauty. Awesome in the ability to provide for your children what they have need of, Lord. And Father, we just ask today that you meet every need, Lord, that is here, Lord. Every need. Every need. Answer the petitions, Lord, exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, Lord. And not only for us, Father, but for your whole body. There are many souls, Lord, all the souls who watch these videos, Lord, these messages that you have us uh, put up on YouTube and wherever they get posted on Facebook and Twitter, wherever, Lord, all over the Internet. Lord, whoever will see this, Lord, they have needs, Lord. They have needs today. Meet every need they have, Lord. Meet every need, Father. Supply every every need, every request, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, right now I thank you that you give us authority over every unclean spirit, every wicked, vile, demonic force, Lord. Every entity in the second heaven, Lord, that is opposing you, that is coming against you, that is an antichrist, oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, we praise you that you give us authority and we just take that authority. We wield that authority right now in the name of Jesus by the blood of Yeshua, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we command those things to be broken. We command those demonic forces, those hindering spirits, anything that is hindering the work of the Lord in the life of his church, we break it right now and we command it to be broken. And we thrust it down. We throw it down. We pull it down in Jesus' name by the blood of the Lamb. And we command it to be broken. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. And Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, that you've given such authority to men, Lord. But it's only in your Son, Jesus Christ. It's only by the righteousness of Christ and the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. And we command every force, every wicked, vile, demonic, witchcraft, spell, hex, vex, or curse anyone's ever tried to place upon this ministry upon the ministry of Christ and, and God's people we command it to be broken right now in Jesus name we take authority over it hallelujah hallelujah thank you father thank you Jesus hallelujah and we break it right now hallelujah we cancel the assignment hallelujah in Jesus name by the blood of the lamb hallelujah and Father, for all those today, Lord, who are hurting in their physical bodies, Lord, we pray that you energize their bodies, you quicken their mortal bodies, as you say in Romans chapter 8, Lord, and that you fill them to overflowing with your holy fire, O oh God. Fill them to overflowing with your holy fire, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Father, we praise you, we worship you today. We thank you, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We just so much love you, Lord. We just want to serve you and continue, Lord, to walk in the way that you have ordered for us to walk, Lord. Trusting simply in you, Lord. Looking to you for all that we have need of, Lord. And Father God, we thank you that you are the mighty God who does provide for your church. Who does provide for every single need. For every single need, Lord, that your body has, you provide. You are the great provider, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We praise you and thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord wants you to understand some things today that in the body of Christ, we are one body. We're not separate. We're supposed to be one body of Christ. And today, in this age, in this year, 2011, and for the last almost 2,000 years, you know, in the book of Acts, it's recorded that Paul, when he was talking to the church at Ephesus, Paul spent three years at Ephesus. And when he left there for the last time, he said, After my departure, grievous wolves shall come in not sparing the flock and they did come in and they've been in the church ever since that time after the apostles all passed on 
the grievous wolves came in and, and, the, and it's a d demonic spirit of whoredoms and, and witchcraft and harlotry keeping people focused on their own self and what they need and desire and want and what people want basically it boils down to they want to be worshipped they want to be worshipped as God they want to be the important one okay and these grievous wolves came into the church and they have infiltrated the church with so much false teaching and so much false doctrine and that is the, one of the great and awesome reasons that today we have the Holy Bible the scriptures that are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path we can go to the scriptures we can learn things we can see the truth of how God works and what God is doing in this hour in this day hallelujah and what he has done in the past and what he will do in the future hallelujah you know the Lord's ways are strange and mysterious and the Apostle Paul said so Paul was a man of God who had such great revelations such great revelations from the throne that the Lord had to send to him a thorn in the flesh to buffet him. Hallelujah. And Paul prayed for three seasons. For like nine months, Paul prayed that that thorn would be removed. He prayed a long time. And the Lord did not lift that thorn from Paul. He did not lift that messenger of Satan that buffeted him. Whether it was something in his physical body or something in his, uh, in his mind, Paul was buffeted. It was probably both. And I know my dear wife and I, we get buffeted. And it's mainly in the in the spiritual, in the mind, but also in our physical bodies, because we have a great burden given to us by the Lord for the church, and we love the church, and we want to see the church grow in the grace and in the awesome wonder, beauty of who Christ is. But there's so much that has come into the church that is infiltrated that is so wicked and vile and evil and it all boils down to the big self and what are people focused on more than anything right now is they're focused on their own self and their own well-being and if we're not careful we we can tend to fall into that See, God told us to trust him for our needs and everything and we do but the temptation comes the test comes and the Lord says now let me see what you will do see? the Lord says now let me see what you will do in this test and he's teaching us more and more more contentment more how to praise him more how to love him more how to worship him in the midst of every fiery trial because as the times draw near to the end each day that goes by we get closer to the return of Christ the testings and the trials become more accentuated I should say or they become more uh, close pressing we've uploaded some uh, videos that we compiled that we've done in the past but these videos all these messages on this channel every one of them are relevant are relevant for right now for today because the Word of God is boundless it's timeless it's 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 the word for all time you know if Jesus tarried for a hundred years I'll be well in the grave before he comes back and so will a lot of you hearing this right now and how are we going to live our life today 
that's the question. Are we going to love him today and depend solely on him today and worship him today and be faithful unto him today? By his blood and by his spirit? Or are we going to grumble, complain, murmur as the children of Israel in the wilderness did? You know, we're in a wilderness right now in this earth. The church is going through the wilderness right now. And God is gathering his people together in fixing to draw us all into his barn after he has finished gathering the bundles of tares and he's going to burn them. He's going to burn the tares and then gather his wheat into the barn. That's what it says in Matthew 13. And that's the order it's going to happen in. And as his sheep, as his wheat, we have to remember the process that wheat goes through. And that one video we put up, I forget the name of it right now, but I'm grinding the wheat in there. And the Lord says, we are the wheat. And there's a lot of processes to make bread. And you think about that and meditate on that. And then when these trials and tribulations and testings come, we don't forget it. We remember that he said it would be so. You know, as a as a preacher and a teacher, it's uh, it's rather difficult sometimes to remember exactly what the Lord has said. And one of the things he said is, when I preach and or teach and share and preaches or teaches that what we're preaching is for us first. I mean, we have to be obedient to the word of the Lord that he speaks through our mouth. But we soon forget, just like everyone does. But the Lord is so faithful to bring us back to remembrance. Hallelujah. To bring us all back to remembrance. To call to mind what his word says. Like when a spirit of fear jumps on you about something, the Holy Spirit quickens in our mind His Word. The Lord has not given me the spirit of fear. No, the Lord's not giving me that spirit. That spirit's coming from the flesh, or the world, or the devil. It's not from the Lord. The Lord's giving me the spirit of power, love, the sound mind. Hallelujah. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, taking every thought captive unto the obedience of our God and King. Hallelujah. Unto the obedience of Christ. See? We have all that we need, all the grace that we need right now, this minute, right now, when you're watching this video and I'm I'm sitting here recording it. We have all the grace we need right now to make it through this day. To make it through each moment of every day. But we, as God's children, must draw upon that. We must reach up in faith and draw upon, in faith, all the grace needed from the throne to make it through this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it as his people as his church and we will not be fretful people we will learn contentment as the Lord teaches us and gives us his grace to learn it. part of this ministry the main part of it is, is to is to call the church back to its first love which is Christ Jesus everything in this earth does not matter Nothing matters in this earth. Nothing. All the stuff that people think is important, which is mainly physical stuff, it's not important. What's important is the spiritual. The spiritual. Where's your spirit at today? Where's your spirit at today? 
What's it focused on? Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There will your heart be also. Because what the devil has done is lied to people, making them think that uh, gain is godliness. Having gain, gain of the world's goods, gain of what the world thinks is important is godliness. But that's not godliness. Godliness with contentment is great gain. See, And Paul said that contentment, he had to learn contentment. He said in Philippians 4, he has learned in whatsoever state he was therewith to be content, whether he had plenty or whether he had nothing at all. He learned how to go hungry. He learned how to have plenty. But today, in this day, people don't want to learn contentment. People just want to have every single thing they need. And you say, oh, how do you know that, John? Because I've been there. God has taught my wife and I contentment. And he's still teaching us contentment. Because <clears throat> we go through the fire learning so that we can instruct you. We go through the time of testing so that we can instruct you. We receive the comfort from the Lord to make it through each day so that we can in turn comfort you with that same comfort that we have received from Christ. There's many trials we can't share because we don't believe people would under people probably wouldn't understand. But it, it all boils down to the spiritual. Where are we at in the spirit? You know, the Bible says that Jesus Christ became poor so that we might be made rich. And it doesn't mean rich in material things. It means rich in the spirit. Because when you're rich in the spirit, you are the richest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says in... I love the Bible. I love the Holy Scripture because when you read it and you study it and you read it and study it and the Holy Ghost comes back and He just brings it back to you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we are to submit ourselves one to another in the fear of God. And how is the church doing that today? And do you know what submit means? Because we have an idea of submit, submission that has been taught to people where it's people are under us. And that is submission. And that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches submission to be coming up alongside. Coming up alongside. Side by side in the body of Christ. Jesus said, let him who is great among you be servant of all Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. It's vitally important that the Lord's Word continue to be put forth for the body of Christ. But not just a little area, one little area, like prophecy, end times, uh, speculation, people, uh, you know, speculative prophecy. And people really don't have an understanding about what the prophets have said and what's coming down the pike. The Bible does. The Bible has a full understanding of it. If we would just believe the Bible, believe what the scriptures record, what the Holy Spirit laid down. We don't have to worry about uh, how the, everything's going to play out. We have to focus on the Lord keep our attention and our focus upon him if ye then be, ri be risen with Christ set your affection on things above where Christ sits on the right hand of the power on high 
not on things on the earth. Hallelujah. That's in Colossians chapter 3. And in Colossians 3, Paul is, is writing to the Colossians. He never got to go to Colossae, but he sure did get to write them. And, and it's really to the Colossians and the uh, Laodiceans. Hallelujah. And the Apostle Paul is, he says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So this is what the church is to be doing. But today you see in the earth the church is not doing this. The church is having a party. The church is having a party today for the most part in the West. And they're all concerned and worried about what's coming down the pipe with the economy. And they're, they're looking at the politics and, and, and the world, the, the whole entertainment system, the whole media system, all the stuff of politics, economics, and religion has everybody just not focused on Jesus Christ at the Father's right hand, but focused on their self. And God says, my people, you come to me, you look to me, you set your affection on me. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. See, we have to remember that day by day, right here in this household. We have to remember that. Set your affection on things above. The word there, set your affections, is all your thinking, all your thoughts. Not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. What a beautiful thing, huh, to know that. Our life is hid with Christ in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he says in verse 4, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And everybody's got that figured out, right? You know, we don't even know. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface in this time of, of understanding what that means. But I can promise you this, that when everything, when the prophecies happen, you'll know it. <laughs> you will know it as a true believer. It's not our job to try to figure out what the prophecies mean and when they're going to happen. Our job is to love our God. Praise Him and worship Him. Our job is to feed the sheep. Our job is to trust Him for all things. Our job is to walk in, in the beauty of holiness that He is. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise You, Father. We worship You. We worship You and thank You, Lord. Thank you for your word today, Lord. Keep your church focused, O oh God. Keep your church focused today, Lord, upon you, Lord. I pray that for Sharon and I, Lord, that we keep our focus on you today. As we set our hands to do, Lord, the work you've prepared for us to do this day. That our focus would be you, that we would love you, worship you, praise you, glorify you, no matter what, Lord. And that we would just lift our hands to you today and, and just give you thanks worship and adoration oh God and that your name Lord would be exalted in the earth oh God that your name would be exalted in the earth and that you alone Lord you alone would receive all glory honor and praise oh God for you are the Holy One of Israel and we love you Father and we praise you and thank you for all things Lord thank you for providing all that we need Thank you for providing for your church today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quicken our mortal bodies, O oh God. Quicken them, Lord, today. Quicken them, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to give you thanks, Lord. I give you thanks for all that we've gotten out of the garden this year, Lord. I just praise you. Bless you today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I thank you for everything, Lord, that you've given us, Lord. Hallelujah. You've never failed us, Lord, and you'll never fail us, Lord. I bless you and praise you, Lord, today. 
Help your people, Lord. They're in such need today, too, Lord. Help them, Lord, today. Help your church today, Lord. You've never forsaken your bride, Lord, and you never will. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep us, Lord, ever in the palms of your hands, Lord. Under the shadow of your mighty wings, O God. Keep us, O Lord, keep us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, you said, when the Son of Man comes, shall I find faith on the earth? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Jesus, you can see, you can see into this time, Lord. You can see from, from your walk then, Lord, you had the discernment, the understanding, the spiritual knowledge and understanding to see down to 2011, Lord. And you said, will, will I find faith on the earth when I come? And Lord, the, the imp, imp, importunate widow, Lord, that's the parable you gave right before you said that. And she was knocking and knocking, and she was getting down that judge, Lord. And we've come to you, we've come to you, Lord. And we've cried out to you, Lord. We've cried out to you, Lord. We cry out to you right now, Father. We cry out to you. Because you are the just judge, Almighty One. You are the holy judge. Hallelujah. We cry out to you, Father. And we say, Father... Answer. You've heard our prayer. Answer. 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 Answer today. Oh, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy upon those who are wayward today. Bring them back, Lord. Bring them back into the center of your flock, O oh God. Into the center of the fold of the flock, O oh Lord. Bring them back today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Father. I praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let us never forget, Lord, that you are with us. That you are guiding every step of the way, even though we don't feel you, Lord. I was ministering to a young man yesterday, Father, and reminded him, as you reminded me, Lord, because it's so good, Lord, it's so good you, you minister to us when we're ministering to others. We don't live by our feelings. We, we don't go by our feelings. When we first get saved and we feel all euphoric and we're all energized and filled with the Spirit, hallelujah. And we, we just know we got eternal life and then the feelings go away. You know, Father, it's so hard for many right now. They don't have any feelings of, of your nearness. They don't have any feelings of your, your closeness to them, Lord. Or even of your approval. Oh, God, let them know that it's by faith that we walk. Not by sight. By faith that we walk. Faith, hope, and love, Lord. And bless them today with the understanding, Lord, that you have never left them. Never forsaken them, but you are always with your people. Hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.